Sunan Abu Dawood, The Book of Witr Chapters pertaining to the Witr prayer Chapter on the recommendation to pray Witr Ali narrated that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said O people of the Quran, pray Witr for Allah is Witr and loves the Witr This hadith is graded da'if or weak Comments The term Witr means odd in number and refers to the last odd number raka'ah performed during the voluntary night prayer. Abdullah reported similar to hadith number 1416 in meaning from the Prophet peace be upon him, except that he added, a Bedouin asked, what did you say? So the Prophet peace be upon him replied, this is not for you nor for your companions. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. Kharij ibn Hadhaf al-Adawi said, the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him came out to us and said, Indeed Allah, the Most High, has given you an extra prayer which is better for you than red camels. It is the Witr. He has made it for you to be prayed between Isha until the dawn of Fajr. This hadith is graded daif or weak. Chapter on concerning one who does not pray Witr. Abdullah ibn Buraida reported from his father. He said, I heard the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him saying, Witr is a right, so whoever does not pray Witr is not of us. Witr is a right, so whoever does not pray Witr is not of us. Witr is a right, so whoever does not pray Witr is not of us. This hadith is graded daif or weak. Comments He is not of us means he is not a follower of our sunnah. It was reported from Ibn Muhayriz that there was a man by the name of al muhtaji from the tribe of Banu Kinana who heard a man by the name of Abu Muhammad from Asham saying, Witr is obligatory to pray, al muhtaji said. So I went to Ubadah ibn Samit and informed him of this. Ubadah said, Abu Muhammad is mistaken. I heard the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him saying, There are five prayers that Allah has prescribed upon the worshippers. Whoever comes having performed them, not having lost any of them by neglecting its rights, has a promise from Allah that he will admit him into paradise. And whoever does not bring them, then he has no promise with Allah. If he wishes, he will punish him. And if he wishes, he will admit him into paradise. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Chapter on how many rak'ahs is witr. Ibn Umar narrated that a Bedouin asked the Prophet peace be upon him about the night prayer. So the Prophet peace be upon him motioned with his fingers like this and said, two, two, and witr is one rak'ah at the end of the night. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Abu Ayyub al-Ansari narrated that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, the witr is a right upon every Muslim. So whoever likes to perform witr with five rak'ahs, then let him do so. And whoever likes to perform witr with three, then let him do so. And whoever likes to perform witr with one, then let him do so. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Chapter on what should be recited in witr. Ubay ibn Ka'b narrated, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him would pray witr with Glorify the name of your Lord. The Most High. Quran, Surah Al A'la, Chapter 87. And say to those who have disbelieved, Quran, Surah Al Kafirun, Chapter 109. And Allah, He is one and unique. Quran, Surah Al Ikhlas, Chapter 112. This hadith is graded Sahih or authentic. Abdul Aziz ibn Jurayj said, I asked Aisha, the mother of the believers, with what recitation would the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him perform witr? So he, the sub-narrator mentioned it, similar to the previous in meaning. He said that she said, and in the third rak'ah with, say, he is Allah the one. Quran, Surah Al-Ikhlas, chapter 112, and Al-Mu'awwadatayn, meaning both Surah Al-Falaq, chapter 113, and Surah Al-Nas, Chapter 114 This hadith is graded da'if or weak. Chapter on the Qunut during Witr It was reported from Al-Ahwas 
from Abu Ishaq, from Buraid ibn Abi Maryam, from Abu Al-Hawra, who said, Al-Hasan ibn Ali said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, taught me phrases to say in Witr. Ibn Jawas, one of the narrators said, In the Qunut of Witr, Allahumma, ihdini fi man hadayt, wa'afini fi man afayt, wa tawallani fi man tawallayt, wa barik li fi ma a'tayt, wa qini sharra ma qadayt, innaka taqdi wa la yuqda alayk. وإنه لا يذل من واليت ولا يعز من عاديت تباركت ربنا وتعاليت O Allah, guide me among those whom you have guided and protect me from all causes of grief along with those whom you have protected from all causes of grief and take charge of my affairs along with those whose affairs you have taken charge of and bless me in all that you have given me and protect me from the evil that you have decreed. For indeed, you are the one that decrees, and none can decree against your decree. And indeed, one whom you protect will never be humiliated. Your blessings abound, our Lord, and you are exalted. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments The Arabic word qunut has a number of meanings. Obedience Submissiveness, prayer, salah, supplication, worship, standing, qiyam during prayer, and keeping silent. Qunut, as used in the context of the witr prayer, means supplication. Another chain from Zuhair that Abu Ishaq narrated to them with his chain, and with its meaning, and he said in the end of it, This is said in the Qunut during witr, and he did not mention phrases to say in witr. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was reported from Hamad, from Hisham ibn Amr al-Fazari, from Abdul Rahman ibn al-Harith ibn Hisham, from Ali ibn Abi Talib, that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, would say at the end of his witr, Allahumma inni a'udhu bi ridaka min sakhatika, wa bi mu'afatika min uqubatika, wa a'udhu bika minka, la uhsi thana'an alayka, anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. O Allah, I seek refuge in your pleasure from your displeasure, and from your protection against your punishment, and I seek refuge in you from you. I cannot count, do justice in praising you, for you are as you have praised yourself. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Abu Dawood said, Hisham is the earliest of Hamad's sheikhs, and it was conveyed to me from Yahya ibn Ma'in that he said, no one other than Hamad ibn Salama reports from him. Abu Dawood said, Isa ibn Yunus reported from Sa'id ibn Abi Aruba, from Qatada, from Sa'id ibn Abdul Rahman ibn Abza, from his father, from Ubay ibn Ka'b, that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, would perform the Qunut, meaning in the Witr prayer, before going into Ruku'a. Abu Dawood said, and Isa ibn Yunus also reported this hadith from Fitr ibn Khalifa, from Zubayd, from Sa'id ibn Abdul Rahman ibn Abza, from his father, from Ubay, from the Prophet, peace be upon him, similarly. And it has been related from Hafs ibn Ghiyath, from Mis'ar, from Zubayd, from Sa'id ibn Abdul Rahman ibn Abza, from his father, from Ubay ibn Ka'b, that the Messenger of Allah performed the Qunut in Witr before going into Ruku'a. Abu Dawood said, And like this, it was reported by Abdul A'la, and Muhammad ibn Bishr al-Abdi, who heard it in Al-Kufa, along with Isa ibn Yunus. And they did not mention the Qunut. And it was also reported by Hisham al-Dastawai, and Shu'ba from Qatada, and they did not mention the Qunut. Abu Dawood said, As for the hadith of Zubayd, Sulaiman al-A'mash, Shu'ba, Abdul Malik ibn Abi Sulaiman, and Jarir ibn Hazm reported it, all of them from Zubayd and none of them mentioned the Qunut in it, except for what was related from Hafs ibn Ghiyath, from Mis'ar, from Zubayd, for he said in his narration of it, he performed the Qunut before the Ruku'a. Abu Dawood said, and it is not popular from the narration of Hafs, we fear that it is really from Hafs from someone other than Mis'ar. Abu Dawood said, it has been related that Ubay would say the Qunut during the middle of Ramadan. Comments it is to be noted that in Witr prayer, the Qunut was said before Ruku'a, bowing, 
but the qunut performed during the times of distress or calamity was said after the ruku'ah. Muhammad ibn Sirin narrated from some of his companions that Ubayy ibn Ka'b led them in prayer, meaning in the month of Ramadan, and he would pray with the qunut in the latter half of Ramadan. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. It was reported from Yunus ibn Ubaid from Al-Hasan that Umar ibn al-Khattab gathered the people behind Ubayy ibn Ka'b in the month of Ramadan. He led them for 20 nights. He would not pray the qunut except in the last half of the month. When the last 10 nights would start, he would not lead them and instead pray in his house. So they would say, Ubay has fled like a slave. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. Abu Dawood said, this shows that what was mentioned regarding the qunut is not correct. And these two hadiths show the weakness of the hadith narrated from Ubay that the Prophet peace be upon him would perform the qunut in the witr. Chapter on supplicating after witr. It was reported from Ubay ibn Ka'b that he said, when the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him would say the taslim of the witr prayer, he would say, Subhan al-Malik al-Quddus, exalted is the holy king. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was reported from Abu Sa'id that he said, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, Whoever oversleeps for his witr prayer or forgets to pray it, he should pray it when he remembers. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments Based upon this hadith, the missed witr prayer may be performed whenever one awakens or remembers it. Chapter on Praying Witr Before Sleeping it was reported from Abu Sa'id of Azdishanu'a from Abu Huraira that he said, My close friend, the Prophet peace be upon him, advised me with three matters which I will never abandon, whether I am traveling or not, to pray two rak'ahs of duha and to fast three days of every month, and that I not sleep except after praying witr. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments In case a person fears he cannot wake up from his sleep, until the onset of dawn, he should perform the witr prayer before he goes to bed. It was reported from Jubayr ibn Nufayr, from Abu ad darda who said, My close friend the Prophet, peace be upon him, advised me with three matters, which I will never abandon for any reason. He advised me to fast three days of every month, and that I not sleep except after praying witr, and that I pray the two rak'ahs of duha, whether I was traveling or not. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. Footnote. See Sahih Muslim, hadith number 1675. Comments. These hadiths encourage busy people and students to say their late night prayer. Qiyamul layl in the first part, early hours of night after Isha. Abu Qatada narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, asked Abu Bakr, When do you pray the witr? He said, I pray the witr in the early part of the night. And he asked Umar, When do you pray witr? He said, In the last part of the night. So he said to Abu Bakr, This one has been cautious. And he said to Umar, This one has been strong. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Comments In case a person feels it hard to wake up in the last hours of night, he should perform his witr prayer before he goes to bed and perform tahajjud prayer when he wakes up late at night. He needs not perform witr again in this case. Chapter on the time of the witr prayer Masruq said, I asked Aisha when the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him would pray the witr prayer. She replied, he would do all. He would pray at the beginning of the night, and the middle, and the end. However, in the late part of his life, when he passed away, he would pray closer to the time of dawn. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments The time of Isha prayer lasts until midnight, while that of witr prayer until before dawn. It was reported from Ibn Umar that the Prophet peace be upon him said, Rush to offer the witr before dawn. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments In case one misses the witr prayer at night, one may perform it after the onset of dawn. Abdullah ibn Abi Qais said, I asked Aisha regarding the witr of the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him. She said, He sometimes prayed witr in the beginning of the night, and he sometimes prayed towards its end. So I said, How did he use to recite? 
Did he recite silently or out loud? She replied, he did both of these acts. Sometimes he recited silently, and sometimes he recited out loud, and sometimes he performed ghusl before going to sleep, and sometimes he performed wudu then went to sleep. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Abu Dawood said, Others besides Qutayba, one of the narrators, said, meaning for sexual impurity. It was reported from Ibn Umar from the Prophet, peace be upon him, that he said, Make the witr the last prayer that you pray at the night. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments Some scholars argue on the basis of this hadith that it is not permissible to say a voluntary prayer after witr prayer, but other scholars dispute it and assert that it is commendable and it is not impermissible since the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him himself performed a two rak'ah voluntary prayer after he had already performed witr, according to authentic narrations. Chapter on regarding the cancellation of witr. Qais ibn Talq reported, Talq ibn Ali once visited us during one of the days of Ramadan. He stayed the evening with us and broke his fast. He then led us in prayer that night and prayed the witr for us as well. He then returned to his masjid and led his companions in prayer. When the witr prayer was left, he asked another man to step forward in his place and said to him, Lead your companions in the witr prayer. For I heard the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him say, There should not be two witrs in one night. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments A witr prayer, which consists of an odd number of rak'ahs, may not be changed into an even number of rak'ahs. There is no authentic tradition of Allah's Messenger peace be upon him supporting that. So if one is not in the habit of performing tahajjud prayer, then he should perform witr prior to sleeping. Chapter on the Qunut in the other prayers Abu Huraira narrated, I swear by Allah, I will imitate for you the prayer of the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him. He, a sub-narrator said, so Abu Huraira would say the Qunut in the last rak'ah of Dhuhr and Isha and Subh, Fajr. He would pray for the believers and curse the disbelievers. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Al-Bara reported the Prophet peace be upon him would perform the Qunut in the Subh prayer. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Abu Dawood said, Ibn Mu'adh, one of the narrators added, and in the Maghrib prayer. It was reported from Abu Huraira that he said, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him performed the Qunut for one month during the Isha prayer. He would say in his Qunut, O oh Allah, save Al-Walid ibn Al-Walid. O oh Allah, save Salama ibn Hisham. O oh Allah, save the oppressed among the believers. O oh Allah, increase your punishment on the tribe of Mudar. O oh Allah, send upon them drought similar to the drought of Yusuf. Abu Huraira said, one morning, the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him did not supplicate for them. So I mentioned this to him, and he said, Have you not seen that they have arrived? This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Ibn Abbas narrated, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him performed the qunut continuously for one month in the Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, and Subh prayers. He would do so at the end of every prayer, in the last rak'ah, after he had said, Allahu liman hamidah. Allah hears he who praises him. He would supplicate against some of the tribes of Banu Sulaym, Ri'l, the Quan, and Usayyah. Those that were behind him would say, Ameen. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Comments 1. On such occasions, the Qunut is said aloud in all prayers, including those in which the Quran is recited quietly, and the worshippers behind a Imam. Say Amin. 2. Ri'l, the Quan, and Usayya were those tribesmen who had slain the Muslims of Bir Ma'una. Anas ibn Malik was asked, Did the Prophet, peace be upon him, perform the Qunut in the Subh prayer? He replied, Yes. He was then asked, Before the Ruku' or after? He replied, After it. This hadith is graded Sahih or authentic. Musaddad, one of the narrators, said, for a short period of time. It was reported from Anas ibn Sirin, from Anas ibn Malik, that the Prophet, peace be upon him, performed Qunut for one month and then abandoned it. 
This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was reported from Muhammad ibn Sirin, someone who prayed the Isha prayer with the Prophet peace be upon him narrated to me that he peace be upon him stood for a period of time after raising his head from the ruku' during the second rak'ah. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Chapter on the virtue of offering voluntary prayers at home. Zayd ibn Thabit narrated, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him sectioned off a small area in the masjid, and he would exit his house at night and pray in it. So the people started praying with his prayer behind him, and they would come every night. One night, the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him did not come out to them, so they coughed and raised their voices and threw small pebbles at his door, until he came out in a state of anger. He peace be upon him said, O people, your actions, that is the prayer behind me, continued until I thought that it would become obligatory upon you. So I command you to pray in your houses, for indeed the best prayer that a person prays is the prayer in his house, except for the obligatory prayers. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him sectioned off a small area in the masjid, using some mats and situating them in a manner that they formed short walls. Ibn Umar narrated that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, Make some of your prayers in your house and do not transform them into graveyards. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments Make some of your prayers in your house and do not transform them into graveyards, meaning voluntary prayers. Chapter on Long Standing During Prayer Abdullah ibn Hubashi al-Khath'ami said that the Prophet peace be upon him was asked, Which of the deeds is the most virtuous? He replied, Standing for long periods of time during prayer. He was asked, And which charity is the most virtuous? He replied, The efforts in charity of one who is destitute. He was asked, And which type of emigration, hijra, is the most virtuous? He replied, The one who emigrated left what Allah had prohibited him from. He was asked, And which type of jihad is the most virtuous? He said, He who performed jihad strived against the pagans with his wealth and life. He was asked, And what type of martyrdom is the most honorable? He replied, He whose blood was spilled and whose horse's leg was cut off. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Chapter on Encouragement to Pray the Night Prayer Abu Huraira narrated that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, May Allah have mercy on a man who stood up to pray at night and woke his wife up to pray. And if she did not wake up, he sprinkled water on her face to wake her. May Allah have mercy on a woman who stood up to pray at night and woke her husband up. And if he did not wake up, she sprinkled water on his face to wake him. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Comments See hadith number 1308. Abu Sa'id and Abu Huraira both reported that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, Whoever wakes up at night and then wakes his wife up as well, and they both prayed two rak'ahs together, will be written among those men and women who remember Allah frequently. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. Comments See hadith number 1309. Chapter regarding the rewards for reciting the Qur'an. Uthman reported that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The best of you are those who learn the Qur'an and teach it to others. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was reported from Sahl ibn Mu'adh al-Juhani, from his father, that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Whoever recites the Qur'an and acts upon it, then his parents will be given crowns to wear on the Day of Judgment. The light on these crowns will be brighter than the light of the sun in one of the houses of this world, if it were among you. So what do you think will be the rewards of the one who actually did the act? This hadith is graded da'if or weak. Aisha narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The one who recites the Qur'an and is proficient in its recitation will be in the company of the noble, obedient emissaries. And the one who recites it with difficulty will be given a double reward. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Abu Huraira narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Never do a group of people gather together in one of the houses of Allah 
Masajid, reciting the Qur'an and teaching it to one another, except that tranquility descends upon them, and mercy surrounds them, and the angels encircle them. And Allah mentions them among those who are with him. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Uqba ibn Amir al-Juhani narrated, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him came out to us while we were at the Suffa and said, Who among you wishes to go in the early morning to the valley of Butan or Al-Aqiq and take two kumas without incurring any sin with Allah nor breaking the ties of kinship? They said, All of us would like that, O Messenger of Allah. He replied, But if one of you were to go early in the morning to the masjid and memorize two verses from the Book of Allah, then this would be better for him than two she-camels. And three verses are better than three. The verses are equivalent to the same number of camels. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote regarding take two kumas. It is explained after the narration. Abu Ubaid said, The kuma is the she-camel with a large hump. Footnote, the kuma is the she-camel with a large hump. It appears that this definition was added by one of the copyists to one of the manuscripts. Abu Ubaid is Al-Qasim ibn Salam, and he compiled a dictionary of odd words in hadith called Gharib al-Hadith. Chapter on Fatiha al-Kitab The Opening of the Book Abu Huraira narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of Al-Alameen, is Umm Al-Qur'an and Umm Al-Kitab, and the seven oft-repeated verses. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments Here, the Arabic word Umm means essence or basis. Surah Al-Fatiha is called Umm Al-Qur'an or Umm Al-Kitab because it contains the essence of the Qur'an. It is also called the seven oft repeated because it contains seven verses which we say over and over in every prayer. Abu Sa'id ibn al-Mu'alla said that the Prophet peace be upon him passed by him while he was praying. He summoned him, but he first prayed, then came. The Prophet peace be upon him said, What prevented you from responding to me? He replied, I was praying. So he said, Has not Allah said, O you who believe, respond to the call of Allah and the Messenger when he calls you to that which gives you life. Quran, Surah Al-Anfal, Chapter 8, Verse 24 I will teach you the greatest surah from or in the Quran before I exit from the masjid. When he was about to leave, Abu Sa'id said, O Messenger of Allah, you said, so he said, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of Al-Alameen. This is the seven oft-repeated verses that I have been given along with the magnificent Qur'an. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Chapter on whoever said that it, the Fatiha, is from the long surahs. Ibn Abbas said, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him was given the seven oft-repeated verses of the Tuwal, long surahs. And Musa was given six, but when he threw the tablets, Two were lifted up, and four remained. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. Chapter on what has been narrated about Ayatul Kursi, the verse of the footstool. Ubay ibn Ka'b said that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, O Abu al-Mundir, which verse that you know of the Book of Allah is the greatest verse? He replied, Allah and his Messenger know best. He said, O Abu al-Mundir, which verse that you know of the Book of Allah is the greatest verse? He said, So I said, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al hayyul qayyum. None has the right to be worshipped but Him, the ever living, the sustainer. So He struck me on my chest and said, Let the gaining of knowledge be easy for you, O Abu al Mundir. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments This hadith proves the excellence of Ayatul Kursi. It also proves the relative precedence of parts of the Qur'an over each other. Chapter on regarding Surah Al-Samad, Al-Ikhlas Abu Sa'id Al-Khudri narrated that a person heard another person recite قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدُ Qur'an, Surah Al-Ikhlas, Chapter 112 
many times, repeating it. So the next morning, he went to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and mentioned this fact to him. It seemed that he presumed this act to be very insignificant. But the Prophet, peace be upon him, responded, I swear by him in whose hands is my soul. It is equivalent to a third of the Quran. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Chapter on regarding the Mu'awwidatayn Referring to Quran, Surah Al-Falaq, Chapter 113 and An-Nas, Chapter 114 It was reported from Al-Qasim, the freed slave of Mu'awiyah, from Uqba ibn Amr, who said, I used to lead the Messenger of Allah's peace be upon him camel during travels. So he once said to me, O Uqba, should I not teach you the best two surahs that have ever been recited? And he taught me, Say, I seek refuge in the Lord of the Daybreak, Quran, Surah Al-Falaq, Chapter 113. And say, I seek refuge in the Lord of Mankind, Quran, Surah Al-Nas, Chapter 114. But he saw that I was not overjoyed at that. So when he camped for the morning prayer, he recited these two surahs in them while leading the people. When he had finished the prayer, he turned to me and said, O Uqba, what do you think? This hadith is greeted Hassan or good. Comments The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, stressed the importance and excellence of those two surahs by reciting them in the dawn prayer. Moreover, it is well established that these two surahs drive away spells, guard against evils, and are a comprehensive formula for seeking refuge in Allah from all types of harms. It was reported from Sa'id ibn Abi Sa'id al-Maqburi, from his father, from Uqba ibn Amr, who said, Once we were traveling with the Prophet, peace be upon him, between al-Jahfa and al-Abwa, when a strong wind and a darkness overtook us. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, began to seek refuge with, I seek refuge in the Lord of the Daybreak, Quran, Surah Al-Falaq, Chapter 113, and I seek refuge in the Lord of Mankind, Quran, Surah Al-Nas, Chapter 114. He said, O Uqba, seek refuge with them, for no one who seeks refuge from any evil will do better than seeking refuge with them. And I heard him recite these two surahs in the prayer while he was leading us. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. Chapter on how it is recommended to recite the Quran with tartil in a manner that is not hasty. Abdullah ibn Amr narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, It will be said to the companion of the Quran, Read and rise and recite, Rattil, as you used to recite in this world for your status will be according to the last verse that you recite. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Comments Memorizing and reciting Qur'an without sincerity and good actions will not merit the reward promised in the aforementioned hadith. Qatada said, I asked Anas regarding the recitation of the Prophet, peace be upon him. He said, he would prolong his recitation. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Ya'la ibn Mamlak said that he asked Umm Salama about the recitation of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. She said, and what will you do with his prayer? He would pray and sleep an equivalent amount of time, then pray the amount of time he had slept, then sleep the amount of time he had prayed. He would do this until dawn. And she also described his recitation as being clear in every letter. This hadith is graded Hassan, or good. Footnote, and what will you do with his prayer? Meaning, how can you pray as he prayed? Abdullah ibn Mughaffal said, I saw the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, on his she-camel, on the day of conquest of Mecca. He was reciting Surah Al-Fatih, and he was returning, يُرَجِّعُ it. This hadith is graded Sahih or authentic. Footnote, Yurajju from Raja'a to return or to repeat, etc. In An Nihaya, Ibn Kathir explained its meaning in this narration. It has been mentioned by Abdullah ibn Mughaffal that he, peace be upon him, did tarjia by elongating his voice during his recitation, like, ah, uh, ah, uh, 
Ah, and this only resulted from him, and Allah knows best on the day of the conquest, because he was riding on his mount. So the she-camel was making him move sideways and up and down, so tarjia occurred in his voice. Al-Bara ibn Azib reported that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, Beautify the Qur'an with your voices. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote. It is explained to mean beautify your voices with the Qur'an, and that in it is proof that what is heard from the reciter of the Qur'an is the Qur'an. It was reported from Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, He who does not yataghanna with the Qur'an is not of us. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote. He who does not yataghanna with the Qur'an is not of us. This is explained with different meanings. Some of them say it means to recite in an audible and pleasant voice. Others say that it means to busy oneself with recitation of the Qur'an rather than other than that. Others say it means to chant in a melodious manner, since the Arabs used to do that when riding on their camels or on other occasions. And rather than poetry or nasheed, they should chant with the Qur'an. Another chain from Sa'ad who said, the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, similarly as hadith number 1469. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was reported from Abdul Jabbar ibn al Ward, who said, I heard Ibn Abi Mulaikah saying, Ubaidullah ibn Abi Yazid said, Abu Lubaba passed by us, so we followed him back to his home. We saw that he was a person who lived in an austere house, wearing simple clothes. I heard him say, I heard the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him say, He who does not yataghanna the Quran with his voice is not of us. He said, so I said to Ibn Abi Mulaika, O Abu Muhammad, what if he does not have a good voice? His teacher replied, He should try as much as he can. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Waqia and Sufyan ibn Unayna said, He who suffices himself with it. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote regarding he who suffices himself with it, meaning, this is their explanation of the term yataghanna. Abu Huraira narrated that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, Allah does not listen to anything as he listens to a prophet with a good voice reciting yataghanna with the Quran in a loud voice. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Chapter on severe reprimand for whoever memorized the Quran and then forgot it. Sa'd ibn Ubada narrated that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, There is no one who memorizes the Qur'an and then forgets it, except that he will meet Allah on the Day of Judgment, disfigured. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. Chapter on Allah revealed the Qur'an according to seven ahruf, different modes of recitation. Umar ibn al-Khattab narrated, I heard Hisham ibn Hakim ibn Hizam recite Surah Al-Furqan in a manner that I did not use to recite it in, even though the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him himself had taught it to me. So I was about to hasten in reprimanding him, but I waited until he finished his recitation. Then I held him tightly by his rida, upper garment, and brought him to the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him. I said, O Messenger of Allah, I heard this man recite Surah Al-Furqan in a manner different from what you taught me. So the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him commanded him, recite. He recited in the same manner as I heard him recite. The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, this was the way it was revealed. Then he commanded me, recite, and I recited it. He said, this was the way it was revealed. Then he said, this Quran has been revealed in seven ahruf. So recite whatever is convenient of it. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. As Zuhri said regarding the different modes of recitation, these ahruf are all of the same meanings. They do not differ with regards to what is allowed and what is prohibited. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was reported from Sulaiman ibn Surad al-Khuza'i from Ubayy ibn Ka'b that the Prophet peace be upon him said, 
O Ubay, I was taught the recitation of the Qur'an, and it was said to me in one harf or two. The angel that was with me said, Say in two harfs. So I said, In two harfs. Then it was said to me, In two harfs or three. The angel that was with me said, Say in three. So I said, In three. Until we reached seven ahruf. All of them are a meanings of healing and complete. Whether you say, The one who hears, The one who knows, The one full of honor, The all wise. It is the same. As long as you do not finish a verse of punishment with mercy, or a verse of mercy with punishment. This hadith is graded da'if, or weak. It was reported from Ibn Abi Layla, from Ubayy ibn Kab, that the Prophet, peace be upon him, was once at a body of water, belonging to Banu Ghifar, when Jibreel came to him and said, Allah, all glory and honor, is to him, commands you to recite the Qur'an to your nation in one harf. He replied, I seek Allah's protection and forgiveness. My nation cannot handle that. So he came to him a second time and mentioned a similar statement until he reached seven ahruf. He said, Allah commands you to recite the Quran to your nation in seven ahruf. So whichever harf they recite in, they have recited correctly. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Chapter on regarding supplication, ad dua and Nu'man ibn Bashir narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The supplication, ad dua is the essence of worship. Your Lord has said, Call upon me, I will respond to you. Quran, Surah Ghafir, Chapter 40, Verse 60 This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments Since supplication is worship, it is quite obvious that supplicating to someone other than Allah is a form of shirk. It was reported from Abu Na'ama, from a son of Sa'd, who said, My father heard me while I was saying, O Allah, I ask you to grant me paradise, and its blessings, and its glory, and its this, and its that, and I seek refuge in you from the fire, and its chains, and its colding water and it's this, and it's that. So he said, My dear son, I heard the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him say, There will be a group of people who will exceed the boundaries of supplication. So be careful that you are not among them. If you are given paradise, you will be given it with all that is in it. And if you are saved from the fire, you will be saved from it and all that is in it of evil. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. It was reported from Fadal ibn Ubaid, the companion of the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him, that he said, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him heard a person supplicating in his prayer, without having praised Allah, nor having sent salat upon the Prophet peace be upon him. So the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, This man has been hasty. Then he called him and said to him, or to another person, when one of you supplicates, let him begin by praising Allah and glorifying him. Then let him send salat upon the Prophet, peace be upon him. Then let him supplicate with whatever he wishes. This hadith is graded hasan or good. Aisha narrated, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, would like comprehensive supplications, and he would leave every other type. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments that is, all-inclusive supplications, with few words that encompass wider meanings, comprehending the blessings of this world and the next. It was reported from Al-A'raj, from Abu Hurairah, that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Let not any of you say, O Allah, forgive me if you please, O Allah, have mercy on me if you please. Rather, be firm in your asking, for no one can force him. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was reported from Abu Ubaid, from Abu Hurairah, that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, You will be responded to as long as you are not hasty, that you say, I have supplicated, but no response has been given to me. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments Supplications are answered in a variety of ways. 1. One may get what he has asked for. 2. Or one may get what they asked for later, the reason of delay being some hidden wisdom unknown to the person. 
3. Or Allah may ward off some evil from him, or give him something else instead. 4. Or his prayer may be stored for him to be rewarded in the hereafter, when he shall be in need of it the most. It was reported from Muhammad ibn Ka'b al quradi that Abdullah ibn Abbas narrated that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, Do not cover up walls. Whoever looks at the writing of his brother without his permission, it is as if he is looking at the fire. Ask Allah with the palms of your hands, and do not ask with the back of the hands. And when you finish, then wipe your faces with them. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. Abu Dawood said, This narration was related by other route, also, from Muhammad ibn Ka'b, and all of them are weak. This version is an example of them, and it too is weak. It was reported from Abu Dhayba that Abu Bahriya Sakuni narrated to him from Malik ibn Yasar Sakuni, then Al Awfi, that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, When you ask, supplicate Allah, ask him with the palms of your hands, and do not ask him with the back of your hands. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Abu Dawood said, Sulaiman ibn Abdul Hamid said, He was a companion of ours, meaning Malik ibn Yasar. Footnote, Abu Dawood said Sulaiman ibn Abdul Hamid said means Abu Dawood heard this narration from him. Comments, normally during a supplication, one turns the palm of the hands up, but during the prayer for rain, one should turn the palms down, keeping the backs of palms up, as did the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, according to the authentic hadiths. Anas ibn Malik said, I saw the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, supplicate like this with the palms of his hands and their back portion. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. Salman narrated that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, Your Lord is shy, hayy, ever generous, kareem. He is shy to allow his servants' his hands to return empty after he has raised them up to him. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. It was reported from Wuhayb, meaning Ibn Khalid that Al-Abbas ibn Abdullah ibn Ma'bad ibn Al-Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib narrated from Ikrima from Ibn Abbas that he said, Asking is done by raising your hands to the level of your shoulders or about that level, and seeking forgiveness is done by pointing with one finger, and beseeching is done by stretching your hands completely. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Another chain from Abbas ibn Abdullah ibn Ma'bad ibn Abbas with this hadith, similar to hadith number 1489, he said in it, and beseeching is like this, and he raised his hands and made his palms in the direction of his face. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Another chain from Ibrahim ibn Abdullah from ibn Abbas that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, and he mentioned similar to hadith number 1489. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. As-Sa'ib ibn Yazid narrated from his father that the Prophet peace be upon him would raise his hands when supplicating and wipe his face with his hands. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. Abdullah ibn Burayda narrated from his father that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him heard a man say, Allahumma inni as'aluka inni ashadu annaka anta Allah la ilaha illa anta al-ahad al-samad alladhi lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakun lahu kufuwan ahad O Allah, I ask you by right of the fact that I testify that you are Allah, there is no deity beside you, the unique, the one whom all objects turn to, the one who does not beget, nor he was begotten, and there is nothing that is similar to him. So he said, You have asked Allah by his name, which when he is asked with it, he gives, and when he is called by it, he responds. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments One should supplicate to Allah invoking his attributes. That is the way the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him supplicated. Another chain for this hadith similar to hadith number 1493 and he peace be upon him said in it You have asked Allah the Magnificent with his greatest name. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments Lifting up one finger, the index finger, indicates Tawheed. It was reported from Hafs 
meaning the paternal nephew of Anas, from Anas that he was once sitting with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, when a person prayed and then supplicated, saying, Allahumma inni as'aluka bi anna laka alhamdah, la ilaha illa anta al-mannanu, badi'u samawati wal-ard, ya dhal jalali wal-ikram, ya hayyu ya qayyum. O Allah, I ask you because you are the one worthy of praise. There is no deity besides you, the ever generous, the originator of the heavens and the earth, O one of honor and generosity, O ever living, O sustainer. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, He has called Allah with his greatest name, which, when called by it, he responds, and when asked by it, he gives. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Asma' bintu Yazid narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The greatest name of Allah is in these two verses, and your ilah, God, is one ilah, God. None has the right to be worshipped but he, the ever-merciful, the mercy-giving. Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, Chapter 2, Verse 163 And in the beginning of Surah Al-Imran, Alif Lam Mim, Allah, there is no deity besides him, the ever-living, the sustainer of all. Quran, Surah Al-Imran, Chapter 3, Verses 1 and 2 Aisha narrated that a blanket of hers was stolen, so she supplicated against the one who stole it. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Do not be lenient with him. This hadith is great da'if or weak. Abu Dawood said, La tusabbihi anhu means, Do not be lenient with him. It was reported from Shu'bah, from Asim ibn Ubaidillah, from Salim ibn Abdullah, from his father, from Umar, who said, I asked permission from the Prophet, peace be upon him, to perform Umrah, so he allowed me, and said, Do not forget us, O little brother, in your supplication. So he said to me a phrase that was more precious to me than the whole world. Shu'bah said, Then I met Asim later in al Madina, so he narrated it to me again, but this time, he said, Include us in your supplication, O little brother. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas narrated, The Prophet, peace be upon him, passed by me while I was supplicating with two fingers. So he said, Make it one, make it one. And he indicated with his index finger. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. Chapter on Al-Tasbih, Glorifying Allah Using Pebbles it was reported that Sa'id ibn Abi Hilal narrated from Khuzayma, from Aisha, the daughter of Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, from her father, that he once visited a woman with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, who had some date seeds or pebbles in front of her. She was using them to count her glorifications, tasbih of Allah. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Should I not inform you of something which is easier or better for you than this? Say, Subhanallah, عدد ما خلق في السماء وسبحان الله عدد ما خلق في الأرض سبحان الله عدد ما خلق بين ذلك وسبحان الله عدد ما هو خالق والله أكبر مثل ذلك والحمد لله مثل ذلك ولا إله إلا الله مثل ذلك ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله مثل ذلك Glorious is Allah equivalent to the number of objects that he had created in the heavens, and glorious is Allah, equivalent to the number of objects that he has created in the earth, and glorious is Allah, equivalent to the number of objects that he has created in between them, and glorious is Allah, equivalent to the number of objects that he will yet create, and Allahu Akbar, similar to that, and Alhamdulillah, similar to that and لا إله إلا الله similar to that, and لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله similar to that. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Comments The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him uttered the tasbih counting as he did so on his fingers. He told his companions to do likewise. The popular way using beads is not sanctioned by word or practice of the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him. It was reported from Yusayrah that the Prophet of Allah peace be upon him commanded them to look after performing the takbir, the taqdis, and the tahleel. 
and to count them with the tips of the fingers, for they will be asked, and they will speak. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Comments On the day of resurrection, the limbs of human beings shall be made to speak and testify. Abdullah ibn Amr narrated, I saw the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, count the tasbih. Ibn Qudama, one of the narrators, added, with his right hand. This hadith is graded daif or weak. Comments The right hand should be used for the tasbih. Ibn Abbas said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, once left from the house of Juwayriya, and her name used to be Barra, but the Prophet, peace be upon him, changed it. When he left, she was sitting in her prayer place, and when he returned, she was still sitting there. He asked her, Have you remained in this prayer place of yours? She said, Yes. He said, I said after leaving you four phrases, three times. Were they to be weighted against all that you said, they would be heavier. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, adada khalqihi, wa rida nafsihi, wa zinata arshihi, wa midada kalimatih. Glory be to Allah, and praise as much as the quantity of His creation, and until He is pleased, and the weight of His throne, and the amount of His speech. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments Personal names suggesting self-praise are not deemed proper. So are names with a bad connotation. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, used to change such names. See hadith number 4952 and what follows it. Abu Huraira narrated that Abu Dhar said, O Messenger of Allah, the rich people have taken away all the blessings. They pray as we pray and they fast as we fast, but they have extra money with which they give charity, and we do not have any money from which to give charity. So the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, O Abu Dhar, should I not teach you some phrases by which you will be able to catch up with those who have passed you, and those behind you will not be able to catch up with you, except if they do as you will do? He replied, Yes, O Messenger of Allah. So he said, Say the takbir after every prayer 33 times, and the tahmid 33 times, and the tasbih 33 times, and complete it the hundredth with La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd, wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. None has the right to be worshipped but Allah alone. He has no partners. To him belongs the kingdom, and to him belongs praise, and he is capable of all things. If you do so, your sins will be forgiven, even if they are like the foam of the ocean. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Chapter on what a person should say when he says the taslim. Al-Mughira ibn Shu'bah narrated that Muawiyah wrote to him, asking him, What would the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him say after he said the taslim in his prayer? So Al-Mughira dictated to his servant and wrote a letter to Muawiyah as follows. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, would say, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu, lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamdu, wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. Allahumma, la mani'a lima a'tayta, wa la mu'tiya lima mana'ta, wa la yanfa'u dhal jaddi minka al-jadd. None has the right to be worshipped but Allah alone. He has no partners. To him is the kingdom, and to him is all praise, and he is capable of all things. O Allah, there is none who can prevent what you give, and none who can give what you prevent, and none benefits the fortunate person. For from you is the fortune. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was reported from Al-Hajjaj ibn Abi Uthman, from Abu Az-Zubayr, who said, I heard Abdullah ibn Az-Zubayr say on the mimbar, the Prophet, peace be upon him, would say after he had completed the prayer, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu. له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير لا إله إلا الله مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون أهل النعمة والفضل والثناء الحسن لا إله إلا الله مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون None has the right to be worshipped but Allah alone He has no partners To him is the kingdom And to him is all praise And he is capable of all things None has the right to be worshipped but Allah alone 
We make the religion sincere to him, even if the disbelievers hate it. He is the one whom blessings, riches, and beautiful praise belong to. None has the right to be worshipped but Allah alone. We make the religion sincere to him, even if the disbelievers hate it. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was reported from Hisham ibn Urwa from Abu Zubair who said, Abdullah ibn Zubair would say these words aloud after each prayer, and he mentioned a supplication similar to this, hadith number 1506, but added, وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ لَا نَعْبُدُ إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ لَهُ النِّعْمَةِ And there is no change nor power except by Allah. There is none worthy of worship except Allah. We worship none save Him. To Him belongs blessings. And He completed the narration. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Zayd ibn Arqam narrated that he heard the Prophet peace be upon him say, Sulaiman, one of the narrators said, The Messenger of Allah would say after his prayer, Allahumma, Rabbana wa Rabba kulli shay'in, ana shahidun annaka anta rabbu wahdaka la sharika laka. Allahumma Rabbana wa Rabba kulli shay'in, ana shahidun anna Muhammadan abduka wa rasooluka. Allahumma Rabbana wa Rabba kulli shay'in, ana shahidun anna al-ibada kulluhum ikhwatun. Allahumma Rabbana wa Rabba kulli shay'in, اجعلني مخلصا لك وأهلي في كل ساعة في الدنيا والآخرة يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اسمع واستجب الله أكبر الله أكبر اللهم نور السماوات والأرض رب السماوات والأرض الله أكبر الأكبر حسبي الله ونعم الوكيل الله أكبر الأكبر Oh Allah, our Lord and the Lord of all things I am a witness that you alone are the Lord you have no partners. O Allah, our Lord and the Lord of all things, I am a witness that Muhammad is your worshipper and messenger. O Allah, our Lord and the Lord of all things, I am a witness that the servants are all brothers. O Allah, our Lord and the Lord of all things, make me and my family sincere to you at all times, in this world and in the hereafter. O one who is magnificent and generous, hear and respond. Allah is greater than all things, the greatest, O Allah, the light of the heavens and earth. Sulaiman ibn Dawood, one of the narrators said, The Lord of the heavens and earth, Allah is greater than all things, the greatest, Allah is sufficient for me, and what a great protector he is. Allah is greater than all things, the greatest. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. Footnote, Rabbu samawati wal ardi. One of the narrators reported this instead of Nuru Samawati Wal Ard. Ali ibn Abi Talib narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, would say after the Taslim, Allahumma ghfirli ma qaddamtu wa ma akhartu, wa ma asrartu wa ma a'lantu, wa ma asraftu wa ma anta a'lamu bihi minni. Anta al muqaddim wal muakhiru, la ilaha illa anta. O Allah, forgive me what I have done and what I have yet to do and what I have done in private, and what I have done in public, and all my excesses, and all that you know of me, you are the one who brings forward and distances. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Ibn Abbas narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, would supplicate as follows, Rabbi a'inni wa la tu'in alayya, wansurni wa la tansur alayya, wamkur li wa la tamkur alayya, wahdini wa yassir hudaya ilayya, وانصرني على من بغى علي اللهم اجعلني لك شاكرا لك ذاكرا ولك راهبا لك مطواعا إليك مخبتا منيبا ربي تقبل توبتي واغسل حوبتي وأجب دعوتي وثبت حجتي واهد قلبي وسدد لساني واسلل سخيمة قلبي O Lord, help me and do not help others against me and aid me, and do not aid others against me, and plot for me for my favor, and do not plot against me, and guide me, and make finding and following guidance easy for me, and help me against those who have transgressed against me. O Allah, make me grateful to you, remembering you, fearing you, submitting myself completely to you, humbling myself in front of you, or repenting to you. O Lord, Accept my repentance, and cleanse my sins, 
and respond to my supplication, and make firm my evidence, and guide my heart, and correct my tongue, and remove the evils, hatred and anger of my heart. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote regarding the word muniban. There was a doubt in the narration of whether it was this word or the one before it, that is mukhbitan. Another chain with its meaning, similar to hadith number 1510, and he said, وَيَسِّرِ الْهُدَى إِلَيَّ And make guidance easy for me. And he did not say, Hudaya, make finding and following guidance. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, would say after the taslim, Allahumma anta salamu wa minka salamu, tabarakta ya dhal jalali wal ikram. O oh Allah, you are a salam, and from you is a salam. You are blessed, O oh one of magnificence and generosity. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Abu Dawood said, Sufyan did hear from Amr ibn Murrah. They say he heard 18 hadiths. Footnote. The author said this in reference to number 1510 and 1511, both of which are reported from Sufyan, from Amr. It was reported from Thoban, the freed slave of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, that when the Prophet, peace be upon him, wished to leave from his prayer, he would seek forgiveness three times, then say, Allahumma, O Allah. And he mentioned the same phrases as the previous narration of Aisha, hadith number 1512. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Chapter on about seeking forgiveness. It was reported from a freed slave of Abu Bakr Siddiq, from Abu Bakr Siddiq, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, The one who seeks forgiveness is not regarded as one who habitually performs a sin even if he returns to the sin 70 times in a day. This hadith is graded hasan or good. Comments To seek forgiveness, meaning saying Astaghfirullah. Al-Agharru al-Muzanay And he was a companion, narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, My heart is sometimes overcome with heedlessness, and I therefore seek forgiveness from Allah a hundred times a day. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments if the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, who was protected by Allah, used to seek Allah's pardon, it naturally follows that ordinary persons who are not protected from sins like him should beg for Allah's pardon all the more. Ibn Umar narrated, We would sometimes count the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, as having said in one gathering, Rabbighfir li wa tub alayya, innaka anta tawabur rahim. O Lord, forgive me and accept my repentance. You are the one who accepts repentance, the ever merciful, 100 times. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was reported from Hilal ibn Yasar ibn Zayd, the freed slave of the Prophet, peace be upon him, that he heard his father narrating from his grandfather, that he heard the Prophet, peace be upon him, saying, Whoever says, Astaghfirullah alladhi la ilaha illa huwa al-hayu al-qayyum, wa atubu ilayhi. I seek Allah's forgiveness the one besides whom there is none worthy of worship, the ever-living, the sustainer, and I turn to him in repentance. He will be forgiven, even if he had fled the battlefield. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. It was reported from Ibn Abbas that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Whoever is habitual in seeking forgiveness of Allah will find that Allah will make a way out for him from every difficult situation and will give him an escape from every worry, and will grant him sustenance from where he did not expect it. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. Qatada asked Anas, what supplication would the Prophet, peace be upon him, be most frequent in using? Anas replied, the supplication that he would use most frequently was, Allahumma Rabbana, atina fi dunya hasanatan, wa fil akhirati hasanatan, wa qina adhab nar O Allah, our Lord, Grant us good in this life, and good in the hereafter, and save us from the punishment of the fire. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Ziyad, one of the narrators, added, So whenever Anas wished to supplicate, he would supplicate with this, and if he wished to make more, he would include this in it as well. It was reported from Abu Umam ibn Sahl ibn Hunayf, 
from his father who narrated that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, Whoever asks Allah for martyrdom sincerely, Allah will cause him to reach the stations of the martyrs, even if he died on his bed. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Asma ibn al-Hakam al-Fazari narrated that Ali ibn Abi Talib said, I was a person who, when I heard a hadith from the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him, would benefit from it as much as Allah willed. And when I heard it from one of his companions, I would ask him to swear that it was true. So if he swore, I would believe him. And Abu Bakr narrated to me, and Abu Bakr told the truth, that he heard the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him say, There is no servant who commits a sin, then performs wudu perfectly, and stand and prays two rak'ahs, and then seeks forgiveness from Allah, except that Allah forgives him. Then he recited this verse, And those who when they commit a sin or wrong themselves, remember Allah, to the end of the verse. Quran, Surah Al-Imran, Chapter 3, Verse 135 This hadith is graded Hassan or good. It was reported from Abu Abdul Rahman al-Hubuli, from As-Sanabihi, from Mu'adh ibn Jabal, that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him held his hand and said, O Mu'adh, I swear by Allah, I love you. I swear by Allah, I love you. I advise you, O Mu'adh, that you never leave saying after every prayer, Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. O Allah, help me in remembering you, thanking you, and perfecting my worship of you. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. And Mu'adh advised as sunabihi with that. And as sunabihi advised Abu Abdul Rahman with that. Uqba ibn Amir narrated, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him commanded me to recite the Mu'awwadat after every prayer, meaning the last two surahs, chapter 113 and 114 of the Qur'an. This hadith is graded Hassan, or good. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud narrated that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him would like to supplicate thrice and seek forgiveness thrice. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. Asma bint Umais narrated that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said to her, Should I not teach you phrases that you may say at times of distress or during distress? Allahu Allahu Rabbi, la ushriku bihi shay'a. Allah, Allah, he is my Lord, I do not associate any partners with him. This hadith is graded Hassan, or good. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari narrated, I was once with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, on a journey of his. When we came close to al Madinah. the people started saying the takbir and raising their voices with it. So the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, O people, you are not calling to one who is deaf, nor one who is absent. The one whom you are calling is between you and the neck of your mounts. Then the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, O Abu Musa, should I not guide you to one of the treasures of the many treasures of paradise? I replied, What is that? He said, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. There is no change nor power except by Allah. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments Allah is above the throne. And he knows, hears, and sees everything. Another chain from which it was reported that Abu Musa al-Ash'ari narrated that they were once climbing up a mountain with the Prophet of Allah peace be upon him. Every time they would reach a high point in the trail, a person would call out, None has the right to be worshipped but Allah, and Allah is the most great. So the Prophet of Allah peace be upon him said, You are not calling out to one who is deaf, nor one who is absent. And he also said, O Abdullah ibn Qais, and he mentioned the hadith in its meaning. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Another chain from Abu Musa with this hadith, similar to hadith number 1526, he said in it, So the Prophet peace be upon him said, O people, be gentle upon yourselves. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri narrated that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, Paradise will become obligatory for the one who said, I am pleased with Allah as a, my Lord, and with Islam as a, my religion, and with Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a, my messenger. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Abu Huraira narrated that the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Whoever sent his salat upon me once, Allah will send his salat upon him ten times. 
this hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Aws ibn Aws said, the Prophet peace be upon him said, Friday is of the best of your days, so increase your salat upon me on it, for indeed your salat is presented to me. They said, O Messenger of Allah, and how will our salat be presented to you after you have perished? He replied, Allah has prohibited the earth from decomposing the bodies of the prophets. This hadith is great da'if or weak. Chapter on the prohibition of a person supplicating against his family and wealth. It was reported from Ubad ibn al-Walid ibn Ubad ibn al-Samit, from Jabir ibn Abdullah, who said that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, Do not supplicate against yourselves, and do not supplicate against your children, and do not supplicate against your servants, and do not supplicate against your wealth. For it is possible that it will coincide with an hour in which requests are granted, so your supplication will be responded to as well. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Abu Dawood said, This hadith has a continuous chain of narrators. Ubad ibn al-Walid ibn Ubadah did met Jabir. Chapter on sending salat upon other than the Prophet peace be upon him. Jabir ibn Abdullah said that a woman came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and said, Send salat upon me and my husband. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Sallallahu alayki wa ala zawjiki. May Allah send salat upon you and your husband. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Chapter on supplicating for one in his absence. Umm darda narrated that her husband, Abu darda heard the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, say, when a person supplicates for his brother in his absence, the angels say, Amin, and may you also be granted it. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, the supplication which has the quickest response is the supplication of one who is absent for one who is absent. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. Abu Huraira narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Three supplications are responded to, there is no doubt regarding them. The supplication of the father, the supplication of the traveler, and the supplication of one who has been wronged. This hadith is graded hasan or good. Comments. Prayers of those three persons are granted. The more so because usually they are said more sincerely and faithfully, more humbly and with greater sympathy. Chapter on what should one say when he is afraid of a people. It was reported from Abu Burda ibn Abdullah that his father narrated to him that when he was afraid of the evil of a people, the Prophet peace be upon him would say, Allahumma inna naj'aluka fi nuhurihim wa na'udhu bika min shururihim. O Allah, we place you at their chests, and we seek refuge in you from their evil. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. Comments. Employing legitimate means includes keeping away from the harm of spiteful enemies. Chapter on regarding istikhara. Jabir ibn Abdullah reported, the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him would teach us the supplication for istikhara, just as he would teach us a surah of the Quran. He would tell us, if one of you is considering a matter, let him pray two rak'ah besides the obligatory ones, and say, Allahumma inni astakhiruka bi'ilmika, wa astaqdiruka biqudratika, wa as'aluka min fadlika al-azim, fa'annaka taqdiru wa la aqdir, wa ta'lamu wa la a'lam, wa anta allamu al-ghyub. Allahumma, fa'in kunta ta'lamu anna hadha al-amra khayrun li fi dini wa ma'ashi, wa aqibati amri, faqaddirhu li, wa yassirhu li, وبارك لي فيه اللهم وإن كنت تعلم شرا لي في ديني ومعاشي وعاقبة أمري فاصرفني عنه واصرفه عني واقدر لي الخير حيث كان ثم ردني به Oh Allah, I seek your choice on the better of the two matters based upon your knowledge and I seek your decree based upon your power and I ask you of your great bounties for indeed you are the one who decrees and I do not decree, and you know, and I do not know. You are the knower of the unseen. O oh Allah, if you know this, here he should name exactly what he wishes, is better for me with regards to my religion, and my life, and my afterlife, 
and the end result of my affairs, then decree it for me, and make it easy for me, and bless me in it. O Allah, and if you know this to be evil for me, and he says just as he said the first time, then avert it from me, and avert me from it, and decree for me good wherever it might be, then make me content with it. Or he said, في عاجل أمري وآجله In the short term and long term. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Another chain for it from one of the narrators from Jabir. Chapter on regarding seeking refuge. Umar ibn al-Khattab narrated, The Prophet peace be upon him would seek refuge from five things, from cowardice, miserliness, decrepitude of old age, the tribulations of the chest, thoughts, and the punishment of the grave. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. Anas ibn Malik narrated that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him would say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-ajzi wal-kasali wal-jubni wal-bukhli wal-harami wa'a'udhu bika min a'thab al-qabri wa'a'udhu bika min fitnat al-mahya wal-mamat O Allah, I seek refuge in you from weakness and laziness and cowardice and old age and I seek refuge in you from the punishment of the grave and I seek refuge in you from the trials of life and death. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments The grave is part of a life that is between this world and the hereafter. He who fails there, fails utterly. Another chain from Anas ibn Malik who said, I used to serve the Prophet, peace be upon him, and I would frequently hear him say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazani. O Allah, I seek refuge in you from grief and anxiety, and from the hardships of death, and from being overpowered by men. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Abdullah ibn Abbas narrated that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him would teach them the following supplication, just as he would teach them a surah from the Quran. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min athabi jahannama. وأعوذ بك من عذاب القبر وأعوذ بك من فتنة المسيح الدجال وأعوذ بك من فتنة المحيا والممات O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the punishment of hell and I seek refuge in you from the punishment of the grave and I seek refuge in you from the trials of المسيح الدجال and I seek refuge in you from the trials of life and death This hadith is graded sahih or authentic Aisha narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, would supplicate with the following words Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min fitnat al nari wa adhab al nari wa min sharri al ghina wal faqr. O Allah, I seek refuge in you from the trials of the fire and the punishment of the fire and from the evils of richness and poverty. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Abu Huraira narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, would say, اللهم إني أعوذ بك من الفقر والقلة والذلة وأعوذ بك من أن أظلم أو أظلم O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from poverty and paucity and humiliation and I seek refuge in you that I cause wrong to others or that wrong be inflicted upon me. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Ibn Umar narrated that one of the supplications of the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him was the following. اللهم إني أعوذ بك من زوال نعمتك وتحويل عافيتك وفجاءة نقمتك وجميع سخطك. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you that your blessings are lifted and that your protection of me is changed and in the suddenness of your punishment and from all of your anger. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments Islam, Divine Guidance and the ability to keep fast to the straight path. These are the greatest of all blessings. As for health, security, and material comforts, these too are the blessings of Allah. It was reported from Abu Salih al-Samman, who narrated that Abu Huraira said that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, used to supplicate as follows, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ash-shiqaqi wa nifaqi wa su'il akhlaq. O Allah! I seek refuge in you from opposing the truth and from hypocrisy and evil manners. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. It was reported from Al-Maqburi 
from Abu Huraira, who said that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, used to say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-ju'i, fa'innahu bi'sa al-dajiu, wa'audhu bika min al-khiyanati, fa'innaha bi'sa al-bitana. O Allah, I seek refuge in you from hunger, for what an evil companion it is in bed. And I seek refuge in you from treachery, for what an evil inner trait it is. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. It was reported from Abbad ibn Abi Sa'id that he heard Abu Huraira saying that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him would say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-arba'i, min ilmin la yanfa'u, wa min qalbin la yakhshau, wa min nafsin la tashba'u, wa min du'a'in la yusma'u. O Allah, I seek refuge in you from four matters, from knowledge that is of no benefit, and from a heart that does not humble itself, and from a soul that is never satisfied, and from a supplication that is not heard. This hadith is graded hasan, or good. Anas ibn Malik narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, would say, Allahumma, inni a'udhu bika min salatin la tanfa'u. O Allah, I seek refuge in you from a prayer that is of no benefit. And he mentioned another supplication as well. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. Comments. A prayer that does not deter a worshipper from evils and shameful acts of lewdness is vain. Farwa ibn Nawfal al-Ashja'i asked Aisha, the mother of the believers, about the supplication of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. She replied, he would say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min sharri ma amiltu, wa min sharri ma lam a'mal. O Allah, I seek refuge in you from the evil of what I have done, and from the evil of what I have not done. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Shutayr ibn Shakal reported from his father, Shakal ibn Humayd, that he said, I said, O Messenger of Allah, teach me a supplication. So he, peace be upon him, said, Say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min sharri sami'i, wa min sharri basari, wa min sharri lisani, wa min sharri qalbi, wa min sharri maniyi. O Allah, I seek refuge in you from the evil of my hearing, and the evil of my seeing, and the evil of my tongue, and the evil of my heart, and the evil of my seminal fluid. This hadith is graded hasan or good. Comments. This supplication is very comprehensive. It protects one from all sins as well as from the means leading to them. Abu al-Yasar narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, would supplicate with, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hadmi, wa'audhu bika min al-taraddi, wa'audhu bika min al-gharaqi, wal-haraqi, wal-harami, wa'audhu bika min an yatakhabbatani shaytanu inda al-mawti, wa'audhu bika an amuta fi sabilika mudbiran, wa'audhu bika an amuta ladigan. O Allah, I seek refuge in you from being crushed, and I seek refuge in you from falling to my death, and I seek refuge in you from drowning, and from burning, and from old age, and I seek refuge in you from the Satan, confusing me at the time of any death, and I seek refuge in you from dying while turning away from your path, and I seek refuge in you from dying from a poisonous bite. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Another chain from Abu al-Yasar, similar to hadith number 1552, he added in it, وَالْغَمِّ And from grief. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Anas narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, would say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-barasi, wal-jununi, wal-judhami, wa sayi al-asqam. O Allah, I seek refuge in you from leprosy, and from madness, and from paralysis and from evil diseases. This hadith is graded da'if or weak. Comments. Sometimes these diseases make the diseased feel disgust for himself, as well as making those attending him suffer greatly. May Allah protect us from them. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri narrated, One day the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him entered the masjid, and saw a person from the Ansar by the name of Abu Umama. He said, O Abu Umama, Why is it that I see you sitting in the masjid, even though this is not the time for prayer? He said, Because of misery that has overtaken me, and debts, O Messenger of Allah. He said, Should I not teach you phrases that, if you said them, 
Allah will remove your misery and repay your debt. He said, Yes, O Messenger of Allah. So he said, Say in the morning and evening, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-hazani, wa'udhu bika min al-ajzi wal-kasali, wa'udhu bika min al-jubni wal-bukhli, wa'udhu bika min ghalabat al-dayni wa qahr al-rijal. O Allah, I seek refuge in you from griefs and anxieties, and I seek refuge in you from helplessness and laziness, and I seek refuge in you from cowardice and miserliness, and I seek refuge in you from the heaviness of debts and the overpowering of men. He said, So I did that, and Allah removed my sorrows and fulfilled my debts. This hadith is graded da'if or weak.